this is so important. Do you remember polev.com forward slash TT 2020? We would like to poll you one last time. Instant feedback. If you're leaving the stage, you're congratulating the speakers. Do it silently. Fantastic. All right, instant feedback. What is that question that we are going to? We are doing it right now. Out of all of the topics discussed, what was the most compelling? We're going to create a word crowd. It will also help us work out in future transforming transportation conferences. What do you care about the most? What is important to be discussed? What? How did I get up there? <laughs> I was, what? <laughs> okay, now you're going to make a brown girl blush. <laughs> Yikes. All right, I'm getting smaller. That's good. Walking's getting bigger. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. We, we genuinely, oh, if it's me, we're in trouble. All right. Uh, genuinely wanting to know because it helps us work out what do we need to talk about? What are we not focusing enough on? I love those two last questions we had. What? Okay. <laughs> Now we're we are done with this now. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm I'm literally I'm blushing. I'm hot right now. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> okay. Ne all the years I've been doing polling, I've, that's never ever happened before. I thank you. I, I'm very honoured. Wow. Um, okay. I need your help for one more thing. We need to practice this because you are going to an award ceremony right now. We can fade to black here. Uh, this is a small level of applause. Please give it to me. All right. We're ready to go to the awards. Fantastic. The Lee Shipper Scholarship Awards are happening over the last few years and the whole idea is for researchers, young researchers, they can be up to 35 years old, so that's still pretty young. If they've got bold ideas for transportation, whatever they may well be, it's a way to encourage them, reward them, help them with their research. How much help will they get? $10,000 worth of help if you're a young researcher. That is really, ha really helpful. They are sponsored, these research awards, by Volvo Research Educational Foundation. We thank you for that and they're called the Lee Shipper Scholarship Awards for a very important reason. Holger Dalkman, can you come up here because you knew Lee Shipper and I think it's really important that we know a little bit about Lee, just a little bit so people understand why this award is important. Go ahead, tell yeah. us about thanks, Lee. Thanks Femi and uh, great to be here. Um, how many of you actually know Lee Shipper? Hands up. Oh wow, okay. okay. Great, That's uh, half. Yeah. So Lee, Lee was a, a brilliant researcher, but also he was a musician. He also had great thoughts at an early stage around transportation, energy, climate, and he really also inspired all of us. And uh, when he passed away far too early in 2011, we thought we should also do something to really also keep his legacy, to really remind us also on his great work. And I'm very pleased also speaking here also on behalf also of the board, but also should send us the regards also to Ramon Munoz. He's a uh, stepson also of, of Lee. He's in Africa. He's working hard for the World Bank. So greetings, Ramon. So I hope you're watching. And so, yeah, so we're very excited, but it's even more exciting also to hear from the scholars. Also. Of course. All right. So you step down there to sure. one side just for a moment, and you can also take this with you, Holger. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. All right, there's something that I've learned today. It's called a Pecha Kocha, which is a timed presentation. It is scary to do this timed presentation. Not only does it have to be a great presentation, there is timing involved. Let me show you the timer. Come here, sir. Stand here. Turn around. Show the people the timings that we're going to be doing. I mean, this is terrifying. That is stop. What else do we have? Five minutes. All right, we won't, we, yeah, we won't need that because we start at five minutes. Then we have three, and then we have... Oh my goodness, could you do that? A sign, stand by. A time presentation in five minutes in front of this very scary audience, but appreciative and encouraging and accessible. Now you can sit down, sir, because we need to start. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness, it's a star in the making there, who knew? The Pecha Kacha starts 
in five minutes, but not until Valentino has come on the stage. Valentino, we're excited for you. So my name is Valentina Montoya. I'm an SJD candidate at Harvard Law School. And thank you all for being here today. I wanted to ask you, from those of you coming from a developing country especially, who hasn't had here a nanny or a maid? And with that in mind, my presentation is called Mobility at the Margins, Time, Money, and Violence in the Commuting Experiences of Domestic Workers in Bogota, Medellin, and Sao Paulo. According to the ILO, and please listen to this, one in every 13 women workers around the world are domestic workers. In Latin America, there are more than 17 million domestic workers, and 95% of these are women. Domestic workers are a sample group because they are highly excluded, since they are often Afro-descendants or indigenous. They perform informal labor and have a very limited income. Other social groups face the same challenges, so the solutions we propose for domestic workers can improve the quality for these other groups too. My hypothesis is that current transportation planning does not respond to domestic workers that are what we call the worst of commuters. But why is it that domestic workers' commutes are so bad? You might be wondering. Well, first of all, because public transportation inefficiently connects high and low income residential neighborhoods. Second, because multiple bus changes and disconnected commutes makes fare integration very difficult. And third of all, because sexual harassment is constant and it hinders women's access to health, education, and other labor opportunities. My research takes the case of domestic workers commuting in Medellin, Bogotá, and Sao Paulo to address four main points. So the first point is the transport connections precisely between low and high income residential neighborhoods. Second, transport affordability. Third, the planning tools to recognize the family care travel needs that some of the literature conceptualizes as mobility of care. And finally, a legal framework to tackle gender-based violence. I take the literature in gender and mobility to analyze law in action or how the law operates in the travel experiences of domestic workers. I, I use a mixed method study, including data from the mobility surveys, travel tour GPS data from the private app Ogaru that connects domestic workers to employers, and the qualitative side of this included 49 interviews with domestic workers and legal analysis. The Lee Shipper Memorial Scholarship supports this data collection. So now I will present my key findings. In the three cities, although low-income women are not traveling longer distances than low-income men, their commutes are the longest in terms of time when they travel between disconnected low and high-income residential neighborhoods. This happens because of the limited access to public transportation, more so in the higher income residential sites, and the limited or total absence of sidewalks in both the high income and the low income residential neighborhoods. Furthermore, Medellin, Bogotá, and Sao Paulo have implemented some type of discounts or free fares targeting particularly disempowered social groups, such as people with disabilities, pregnant women, mothers of young kids, elderly people, or low-income people. Some of these measures apply to domestic workers. Moreover, there is a limited recognition by planners of especially poor women's mobility needs for family care and work. And finally, my findings reveal that domestic workers naturalize gender-based violence, and they also find that the reporting mechanisms are limited, hard to access, and to use. So now my recommendations. Planners need to plan for the worst of user. This means that they must do at least three things. They must provide a service that directly connects low and high income residential neighborhoods. A recent example is the Lila subway line built in Sao Paulo that according to, to some domestic workers reduce their commuting times up to two hours. Second, they must provide targeted time-based subsidies for women who exercise strip chaining. And finally, they must promote campaigns, effective reporting mechanisms, and visible enforcement against gender-based violence. 
My central message today is that planners should make domestic workers, women in the lowest income and social strata, an integral part of the mobility planning process that includes everyone that faces similar challenges. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. My name is Teddy Forsher, and I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley. So I'm here to talk very briefly today about the topic of my dissertation, which covers um, consumer choices, the information presented to those consumers, and the impacts of these choices on city streets, predominantly in urban areas and urbanized areas throughout the world. So you know, before I begin, I just want to define what I mean by e-commerce. And there are these three sectors that you see behind me that are actually becoming increasingly non-mutually exclusive from an operational standpoint worldwide, thanks to the likes of you know, Do Anything like Rappi in Latin America, Postmates as of last week in the US, and many other providers. And they're all part of a really growing retail e-commerce sec segment. Um, OK, moving forward. I want to ask you two things. Number one, how did you get here today? And number two, what was the last thing you bought other than maybe your lunch? You know, what comes to mind first for both of those? And really keep that purchase in your head because we'll come back to it um, throughout this presentation. You know, I have an urban planning background and we really pay attention to history. And I think it's important to acknowledge that home shopping isn't new throughout the world. In the US, 100 years ago, I could get a house to my house. And then in the last tech boom and bust, we saw really the big players in the e-commerce market solidify with your Amazons, your JDs. And then in the most recent tech boom, we kind of saw a niche for everything. And you know, in the last 10 or 15 years, both the biggest delivery companies in the world and the smallest startups are focusing on these last mile operations. So, just getting your goods to your consumer. And that can cost almost 25% of the total delivery supply chain, and they take place predominantly in urban areas. Unfortunately, for those of us as researchers, data pr production is very far ahead of data collection. And so what you see here in the US, at least, is that you know maybe after the recession, urban truck miles haven't caught up to where they were before. And this is somewhat of a good finding. And I have colleagues in the field who are doing great work on supply side data collection. However, what you didn't see in that graph are all of these delivery vehicles that we associate with e-commerce, like that BMW that I found on my way to campus in Berkeley, and all of those low emission modes you know, throughout the world. Um, and we need to treat these differently, but we don't know where they are yet. I think also, as a field, we haven't quite reached a consensus on whether or not e-commerce is a problem. Theoretically, deliveries realize economies of scale. However, you know, what we're seeing in the popular media, and not really in the literature just yet, are big externalities that are being associated with e-commerce. And the closer you get to a one-hour delivery, the more that I resemble a delivery vehicle. So we've started in California, and we're releasing an online survey to consumers to both look at trends in their consumption, and also incentives that might produce better societal outcomes. And with the support of the Shipper Scholarship, we're looking to do one or two other cities throughout the world. So you know, if you have cities, come talk to me. I also think it's important to acknowledge the role that supply plays in last mile logistics. Supply is very big, but as we've seen in the public and passenger transport sector, both supply and demand strategies are necessary for us to really tackle the problems at hand. And I don't expect you to see these, but just understand that supply side strategies have been implemented. But we as consumers also have power here to vote with our clicks. And many of the strategies you see behind me are both going to bring about better societal outcomes from a routing perspective, and they're going to lower costs for these delivery companies, which is going to be a key barrier to implementation in a competitive market. And so through this survey, we're asking things like this. You know, go back to that last purchase you made. Do you remember what it was? What was important to you? What wasn't important to you? And you know, what might have you been willing to trade off if you could have been guaranteed that it were going to be serviced by a low emission mode or you know, a tree were going to be planted in another part of the world? That's what we're looking at. And additionally, we're looking to undercut uh, very expensive data collection methodologies for travel surveys so that we can help municipal agencies throughout the world to get a sense of what their consumers want today and tomorrow. And additionally, looking from the model development phase at 
more spatiotemporally granular outcomes, like where are the delivery hotspots in my city, even if I can't collect data on them, based on consumer profiles, you know, those people who shop on Amazon, those people don't. They may live in different places throughout cities. And additionally, I think, you know, it's been great to see the focus on urban freight at this conference, and the more we talk about these things, the better outcomes will be. So, you know, in closing, I know that was very brief, and I'm happy to answer any more questions that people have offline or online. But, you know, if I've learned anything from this conference today, it's that both in our professional roles and in our personal roles, we can bring about the changes we want to see in the transport sector. So, thank you. So, you just heard from the Lee Shipper Scholarship Awardees. Holger, you have their certificates. Sure. Do you remember that we were practicing this? All right. Valentino and Teddy, please come on stage. And your certificates are that way. Holger, you, have to, you, you don't have a microphone, so you just okay. hand over the certificates. Right. So okay. You, you're handing over it? No, you're handing them over. Okay. You can tell that we went to rehearsals like, earlier. Okay, wonderful. Teddy, thank you, Valentino. It's not hard to present in five minutes. You nailed it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Great job. What is really important is that we talk about, we just gave away 20,000. Well, not we, <laughs> but the sponsors gave away 20,000. Tell us about the sponsors. Uh, it's here, the Volvo Research and Educational Foundation. So thanks a lot also, um, to them. Uh, but also let me thank personally also to the World Bank and the World Resources Institute still also giving us uh, these great young researchers uh, the space uh, and the opportunity. And I think in these days, young people are actually even more our future than ever, ever before. So very pleased uh, so that we have them here. Holger, if people are here in the audience and also they're watching online and they see these awards and these scholarship awards and they're thinking, oh, how do I tell somebody who's doing research about them and there's an expansion for 2020. Tell us about that. What's the call out to action that you want to share today? Yeah, so we, um, first of all, we always had two global scholarships. And thanks also to the Volvo Research and Educational Foundation, we, have, we now also have for 2020, first time, we have three. And uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, and the second message, we had students from all over the world, but we didn't have any from the continent Africa. What? And uh, so we saw those, and we heard a lot how important it is. So sure. we saw those having one dedicated scholarship also to an African student at an African university on an African topic. So that's also the news I want to share. And uh, you might ask me also how we find the information. Holger is asking me to ask him how you found the information. Go ahead. Great. So next week, uh, check out uh, the Lee Shipper Scholarship. So just uh, Google it. It will be online. But there is a sign up uh, to the WI newsletter, sign up to VUF newsletter. You get all the information. And please uh, share the word. And uh, I think most of them in the audience are under 35 anyhow, aren't they? <laughs> so. Don't look at the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank congratulations you. Okay. again, Teddy and Valentino. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.